G'day everyone, welcome back. Um, happy New Year. We're inside today because um, it's not a very nice day outside. Winter's kind of got its grip on us at the moment. Um, it is eight degrees Fahrenheit inside right now. Um, so that's like negative 13 degrees Celsius. And obviously outside's even worse because we've got wind. So I have at least been able to fix the uh, flapping roof un uh, underlayment where we left off. Um, and I've basically got all the materials ordered for the steel. So we'll be picking that one up soon um, and obviously waiting for a nice day to kind of do the last tidy up um, and put on the insulation bats on the outside. And um, that's, you know, was something that's just, yeah, gonna have to wait until the weather's nicer. We, the roof's covered in ice right now, it's not really possible, um, but we'll, we'll circle back to that. Um, the focus inside right now is electrical. So I would really love to get my insulation in the walls so it's not so cold in here, but um, at this point, uh, we just have to get the electrical done, get the plumbing done and get it inspected, and then we can start doing that. So uh, I'm doing all the electrical first and I've actually got almost all of the, um, the receptacles done and then I'm gonna work on the lighting circuits. But um, yeah, uh, rather than doing time lapses and stuff, um, it's kind of, I'm all over the place in the house, you just wouldn't be able to keep up. Um, so let's walk through doing um, the one complete circuit that I haven't done yet, which is just for the bathroom. And um, yeah, we'll take a look at that. I'll give you a bit of a tour around the place. It's an absolute mess at the moment and um, kind of show you what's going on. All right, so starting with my panel right now, basically we've just got all the wires um, roughly pulled. They still need to be drilled through the top plates um, and you know I'll have one or two coming up from the bottom. Um, I've got my main feeder lines um, hooked up. They're coming from the inverters, but I don't have that all wired at the other end yet. Um, and then coming through, um, the job in here, and I'll show you real quick uh, what I'm doing there, but we have to cut up all these foam boards to the right spacing to fit between the foam strips on the roof. So um, my wife's been helping me with that, which is great. I haven't actually cut any of them myself and obviously making a mess, but it's better than doing it outside. Um, you see, I've got a lot of my receptacles done, basically all of the habitable spaces except the bathroom. Um, I did buy this stove too, which is exciting, but obviously I can't hook it up until I have all my um, stove pipe and chimney pipe worked out. So that's a work in progress. Um, this is gonna be the kitchen for now. So you can see we've got like counter height receptacles and then um, one's for a fridge and then I still need to put in dishwasher and um, yeah, then we go over here in the back corner here, I've got the water heater, um, the 10 gauges for that. So that still needs to get hooked up. Um, and then, um, yeah, back here, this room I did first and then, yeah, put all the insulation in here. Um, I'd love to get this in the walls, but uh, it has to wait. This doesn't have to wait. We'll get this on the roof pretty soon. Um, most of them are cut up now and I'll show you the jig I made to do that. So I used a jig on the roof to get all my foam strips perfectly spaced. And so it makes sense to do the same here so that these all fit in really snug. Um, they all get nailed, but it's just easier if um, they really slide in. So this jig basically, you get it flush at the bottom and then you've got a cutting edge along here. I've just been using a jab saw, or oh, Katrina has, and coming along cutting it, um, that gets them all perfect and consistent. And um, yeah, it's just been, a pretty easy and, and relatively fast way to do it. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's have a look at wiring up this bathroom. All right, so I've already bought in the wire to the bathroom that's gonna be feeding our three receptacles. Uh, there's gonna be one placed high up on this side wall and then two here to service the vanity and obviously GSI protected because it's code. So our first steps are gonna be drilling in uh, the holes in the studs and in these um, plates here. We've got a quad stack to drill through, so that's always fun. And um, getting the boxes set, pulling the wires, and then we can start um, making up the boxes. So here are three boxes, one, 
two, and three. And this end one here is gonna be easy because we're just gonna be pulling it through, um, stripping it, and prepping it. The other two, because I've done it on every other box in this house, are gonna get pigtail connections. So they just take a little bit more time, but it does give you um, a much better connection. And um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get those made up. Three boxes wired up. Um, let's pull this out, have a look. So basically, I've got my three uh, wire nuts, my three pigtails. Inspector is, I'm assuming, gonna judge me on my neatness and consistency. So fold them all in there the same way. And uh, yeah, the only thing left to do, um, obviously pulling this tension back, uh, getting the correct length cut at the box, and then um, putting a staple all, I'm gonna do them a couple inches from the box um, to secure the wire. And um, yeah, that's it for, for the rough in stage, at least, of this room. Um, basically, uh, it, you know, it only takes a couple minutes per box. This wire nut uh, tool was the best $11 I ever spent. And um, yeah, still plenty more to do. Lights, of course. So we'll come through, do all the lighting circuits and um, tidy up all the other receptacles. Um, this one's for my oven, so it needs to be wired up. Um, and then, yeah, we'll pick it back up on another day when it's a little nicer and um, we'll start getting all this insulation um, put on the roof. Okay, and the exterior insulation on the roof is finally done. So um, you'll notice, unless of course you're extremely colorblind, that I don't have all the tape on this side that I do on the other. Now, the reason for that is I did a bit of soul searching and some research in the last week since I did the other side. And kind of what I came up with is that the heat that's gonna be present under the roof um, is just gonna deteriorate that tape and unless it was some kind of high temperature tolerant tape, which it isn't, um, and it's not uh, the most, like it's an epoxy based tape, but it isn't crazy sticky, not like a deck tape or um, like a flashing tape. So uh, I figured it was kind of a waste of time for me to do this on the other side. I did still do it for the valleys um, because that is just an area where all the, the water is gonna pull together. So. Um, if I was gonna do it anywhere, it makes sense to do it there. Uh, the other flip side of it is, uh, you know, I try and build this house to the best of my abilities and my budget uh, and, you know, spending the extra basically day. It took twice as long to tape every seam or double tape it really. Um, but uh, the reality is you know, we live here now, we're in a camper and um, honestly living in a camper, it kind of sucks. So we want to get this done and um, we want to be living in here as soon as possible. It uh, doesn't mean I'm going to cut corners realistically. Um, 90 plus percent of uh, metal roof houses, the builder would have just put the, uh, the ice and water barrier then the roof underlayment, and then bang, steel straight on top. So I've got a few extra considerations because I'm off grid and I really need to be energy efficient. Uh, but I also just want to build a good structure and I do believe that standing the metal off the roof, um, having an air gap, insulation, uh, any other waterproofing that is possible um, is a good measure. But whether or not I need three layers of waterproofing, the steel followed by taping all the seams on the insulation, 
followed by the roof underlayment and the ice and water barrier. Um, there's probably overkill. And so, um, yeah, I basically save myself a day by not doing that on this side um, because the roof material arrived yesterday. As far as cost goes for this one, like I've been talking about, I think we're at like $38,000 where we left off. Um, and since then I've done basically um, all of the electrical stuff inside as well as uh, the exterior insulation here. And so exterior insulation, that was about a thousand bucks. Um, and then uh, the electrical, the uh, total, including the water heater, um, was about um, three grand. So um, that's not too bad. I mean, my in-laws just had their uh, electrical done in their new house and it was something like $20,000. So uh, 3,000 bucks is pretty good. Um, it's not quite polished up yet. I will need to do a few things to get it ready for inspection. Um, and then um, I'm also working on the plumbing. So um, yeah, the roof and the plumbing is probably gonna be the main contents of the next video. So uh, subscribe if you wanna see that. And um, yeah, I'll catch you then.